On today's episode of My Home Garage, we're going to be replacing the front pads and rotors on this 2014 Volkswagen Touareg TDI with the 330 millimeter rotors. Let's get at it. Step one. Loosen this Allen key bolt, a hex bolt that's right here behind. It is a six millimeter. It just takes time. There's so much dirt in there that sometimes this tab here doesn't depress on the sensor. So just make sure before you reinstall everything, you clean this all up. Okay, so this is now loose. Okay, we can now remove these. So what you do is you hammer these out, get yourself a punch, and you're going to Knock your pins in. Once you knock the hammer pin, you get a smaller one. And you just keep hammering it through. Same with the top one. Okay. You should be able to pull them out now. If not, get your punch and just keep hammering it all the way through. There's one. There's your dampening clip. There's two. Okay. Here's your brake pads. So what we want to do is we want to depress the pads in. So the way you do that is just get a screwdriver between the brake pad and the rotor. You're going to pry out. Remember these are four piston calipers so leave a screwdriver in there. Now you're going to go on the other side. You're going to do the same thing on both sides. So it's completely frozen. So what we're gonna do is loosen up these bolts and try and get it out. Since we cannot move our brake pad, we must remove the caliper bolts, which are a 21 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. It is very difficult to remove the caliper bolts with your 21 millimeter wrench when you have this wheel turned straight. So first thing you're gonna do is turn the wheel out to the side you're working on. Get your biggest wrench on there. Yeah, remember, these are torqued to 200 foot pounds. Okay. Okay. That is removed. Get your 
break cut out now. Look, it's still seized. Look at that. Completely frozen in there. Take a look. What happens when you don't service your brakes? The brake pad is completely frozen inside of there. And there's our brake pad. Typically, I recommend replacing brake pads when the thickness of the brake pad is the thickness of the material holding it. Now, look at that. Do you think this brake pad was uh, grabbing? Look, it's completely seized inside here because of rust. So, what you want to do is clean up the area where it was making contact with a wire brush, and we'll do that after. First thing we're going to do is our caliper while we remove our rotor. We don't want any tension on this. So there. Our caliper is now supported. There is not too much tension on it as you can see here. It's fine. Done. Now we can focus on getting our rotor removed. So for our rotor it is a Torx T47. The torque value on this is 15 foot pounds, so it should not take a lot of effort to remove this rotor. So we're just going to do a little zap. There it is. Let's put that down. Our rotor is still kind of frozen on there. So and that's it. Our rotor's off. These may be the original rotors. Who knows? So now we're left with this rusty area. It looks like someone has it in here. There's some evidence of anti-seize. So step one, you want to just clean up the rust in the area by hand. If you can't get what you need off of that, you're going to need something a little more aggressive. So you're going to want a scuff pad or a die burn. When you are installing your new rotor, remember, Toreg rotors are ventilated, so there's a front left and a front right. You can use the one that came off the vehicle as a reference point. So this would be the front right axle. As you can see, the direction of the vanes. Confirm that with your new one. It's the same. Also, use your guide online to confirm that the previous mechanic did not install it incorrectly. Okay. Get your rotor on. Torque value on this rotor, hold down screw, is 15 foot pounds. Make sure your rotor is nice and centered. It's torqued. Now we can work on our caliper. So, we just want to clean up the caliper and make sure that the insides where the pads sit do not have any buildup. So, I'm going to leave this on here like so, and I'm going to get a file. Get yourself a file like so, and you're just going to lightly get away with any of the rust that you already know your brake pad was sitting on. Do all four corners. You don't want to take away material, but you want to get rid of some of that old stuff. Okay? Okay. Once that's good, you can reinstall your caliper. And all you're going to do is Position it back in the same slot, like so. Okay. And you still have all your room to play with. Grab both of your nuts for your caliper. Reinstall them, but do not tighten them until the brake pads are in place. We just want to snug them up. We don't want to tighten them. Okay. 
So you can take your brake pad and put it down in here. Make sure it's nice and loose. Grab your hardware, grab the other brake pad, let it in. Okay, grab your anti rattle clip, fits on like so. Push your pins through. Try not to let your brake pad fall. Okay. What I recommend doing is do one side at a time. Grab your hammer. You're just gonna knock your pin. Make sure it's lined up nice. There you go. Grab your second pin. And you're gonna wanna hammer them all the way in. And that's it. Get your brakes done. Now you're gonna connect your sensors. You just go on. So, this goes on like this, other one, just remember the direction, the thicker part faces the inside, this is going to be your indicator, there it is, okay, this part slides in like so, and you're just going to run this here, remember, clean this up. Connect to your connector, hear the click, and now the way this goes in is, it goes in like so. Pay attention now, right now. Okay. What you want to do is, this actually sits in here like, it's supposed to rotate in here. Okay. It only goes on one way. No one ever to pack. It's a pain. Okay, this is how it goes. And this is supposed to slide in underneath like so. So that's how it goes on. There you are. Mm -hmm. Now we have to reinstall this on the back. Could be a bit tricky. Just got to line up that hole. Highly recommend put this on. Put your hand on it. Now we're gonna to torque the caliper bracket, the caliper bracket, caliper and caliper bracket, and the torque value on this is 200 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go 190. There's 190. The reason I'm going 190 is because I'm reusing the bolts. And I don't want to go too tight in case they stretched a bit. 
So 190 is sufficient. So now this side is completely done. Everything is back in place. This right here is a bit of a pain. Use an Allen key, a short Allen key if you can to line it up. This pretty much just sits inside here. The flex hose. Sensor connector. Just runs like this. Both sides have a sensor. Here's your anti-rattle clip. Just make sure you get it centered. It sits inside here. The anti-rattle clip sits inside here. There to there. And make sure you hammer your pins all the way in till they're flush, like so. Okay. Don't need to apply any NECs here because it's a coated rotor. Okay, so now let's get to the other side. This is where the brake pad is getting seized up. If you can see some of the oxidization, the corrosion. So I'm just filing that down. That's all I'm doing. So, I just ran into an issue when I was putting my caliper bolts on. I st they started to go in a little funky, cross-threading. So a good tip to fix them if you don't have a tap is remove the rotor, put them in through the back, and that'll clean up the threads that you damaged at the beginning. I literally could not get this bolt to go on. It was so tight with a gun, so you can clean up the threads like this, by reversing it. 
from the opposite side. Be very careful lining up these bolts when you're putting the caliper on. Last thing you want to do is buy a whole new hub for this. I can't see it being cheap. So there you go. Once you get it all the way through, you know your threads are clean. Reverse it. Go forward. Your threads are clean. I can now continue doing the brakes. Take a look at everything. Anti rattle slips in its place. Sensors connected. Should be tucked in like so. Fit no tucked in. Like that. There. Your caliper bolts are bolt tightened. Twenty one mil. Torque two hundred foot pounds. Your Pad sensor, if it wasn't broken, the harness would be connected here. We are going to replace the pad sensor wire. It tucks up in behind here. I'm sure it's just a loom. Easy to change. If not, we're going to find out real quick. Yeah, it's just connects there. Uh, 15 foot-pounds torqued. Hub is clean. If we wanted to bleed our brakes, we would do so through here. And we will do that in a future episode. We'll bleed the brakes on this vehicle. Things ran a little long today, so it won't be happening today. Okay. So that concludes the video. All right, guys. That's how you do brake pads and rotors on a 2014 Volkswagen Touareg. That'll apply to any second gen Touareg from 2010 to 2016. A TDI or V6, it doesn't matter whether it's gas or petrol. This is how you do the brakes properly. If you can get new hardware, great. But if you can't, you can reuse the old hardware. Have a nice day, guys. Thanks for watching.